Hi folks and welcome to the Salty Seaman, part two of my top 30 military movies of all time. Now, uh, off of my first video, I saw a lot of uh, suggestions and I said, hey, what don't you think I'm going to put on here? And I got a lot of uh, movie suggestions. A couple that are going to be on here, a lot that won't, a lot just because I haven't seen them. And I'll just be frank and upfront, uh, you know, much older movies, pretty, you know, predating the 70s, I really haven't seen a lot of those. And a lot of foreign films, I have not. However, I have seen some, and there are a few uh, more foreign ones on the list. I don't think anyone will make this list, but they will be on the next one. And there's a, a couple older ones on here. But again, this is just my list. This is the, what I think is just the best military movies that I've seen. You know, I say top 30 of all time, you know, it's more of a marketing thing. You know, everyone's going to have their opinion, and opinions are like assholes. Everyone shits out of them. So, uh, let's, let's get started off right now. Number 20, First Blood. This is the first of the Rambo movies, uh, and a completely different movie than the rest of the Rambo movies. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to describe if you think of Rambo as just this super patriotic killing machine doing cool war stuff, you know, that kind of, you know, First Blood Part Two, then went into, you know, Schwarzenegger's Commando and that whole style. That is not the first movie whatsoever. The first movie is about a Vietnam vet who's kind of drifting along and uh, there's a local sheriff who's not happy with having this guy in his town and he basically, uh, you know, gives him PTSD because he kind of tortures him in prison. You know, after he kicks him out of town and he comes back and then it becomes a, uh, a war with him versus the local cops, you know, and how he deals with that, you know, using his combat skills out in the, uh, I think it's the Portland Forest. This, this is a very good example of, a, uh, you know, how badly uh, returning vets are treated, especially after the Vietnam War. And it's one of the greatest uh, acting jobs that Sylvester Stallone ever did, especially the very final scene. Number 19, Black Hawk Down. Uh, this is a great action movie based on real events in Mogadishu uh, about a, uh, a Black Hawk helicopter going down and in efforts to rescue them during some uh, some pretty bad shit. This is this movie is there's a, there's some good character stuff in here, but what really makes this movie is just the the grittiness and action of it, uh, trying to rescue these guys. What's happening to these guys as they're on the ground? And you know the, the the rescue attempts and trying to get communications and you know fighting the skinnies or whatnot and it's it's gritty it's it's intense it's it's a great action flick uh, I think it does a bit over gloss the issues there but they are mentioned why, why we're there in the first place but uh, I mean I just love this movie just for that reason just because there are just so many great battle scenes especially in terms of urban warfare. Number 18, Antoine Fisher, a Navy movie, and another movie where the Navy is the backdrop here. Uh, it's talking about the psychological issues of a young uh, sailor in the Navy. Uh, I think he's supposed to be stationed in San Diego, somewhere around there, and he keeps getting in trouble. And it's delving into, like, you know, a military, you know, Navy psychologist. Uh, they're, they're kind of rolling into one character. But, uh, you know, it's, it's representing a lot of people who helped this guy out, a real man named Antoine Fisher who wrote the story about, you know, getting into the Navy and trying to overcome his demons, dealing back to childhood abuse. And, uh, you know, this is not an unknown story. If you ever served in the military, you run across these guys who had some real bad shit happen to them, and they get in the Navy, and it doesn't immediately solve it, or any service, really. And, you know, just joining doesn't immediately solve it. Sometimes you need more work to get over your demons. And uh, the acting is tremendous in here, and I can't recommend it enough. Number 17, A Few Good Men. Another one I have military bullshitted. Uh, but, you know, just one of the, it's the greatest uh, military uh, court drama there ever was. Which I don't think there's a lot, so pretty easy to do. But yeah, this, this, is, this is an amazing flick from beginning to end, you know. The little details are done so right, and there's a lot of good little legal stuff in here. Uh, you know, the story of, you know, two Marines who uh, basically hazed the guy who wasn't getting the fucking program, and then he ended up dying, 
and you know them defending him and you know where the orders came from and you know exactly how the Marines work and kind of an overall like you know is this the right thing to do is this how Marines should be acting you know given the nature of their job sometimes shit is tough you know sometimes things go too far you know you're left to decide you know do you agree with Colonel Jessup at the end or don't you you know and it's a great quandary that's the greatest movies are about they don't just give you one solid answer they give you a uh, choice, like I said, like, is it this way or is it that way? You know, did the lawyers do the right thing? Did the Marines do the right thing? Uh, it's a great movie on just so many levels. Uh, definitely, definitely a high recommendation if you've never seen A Few Good Men at this point. Number 15, Flags of Our Father. Uh, this is a uh, World War II movie about the people who raised the flag in Iwo Jima. Uh, it's directed by Clint Eastwood. And it's kind of more about the fallout of what happened to those Marines and the one sailor who put up that famous flag that's in, you know, it's got a bronze bus statue, it's, you know, the picture is everywhere, you know, and basically, you know, how this photo, you know, reinvigorated America's, you know, kind of draining enthusiasm for the war, and more importantly, getting money for the war, because they were selling, they, they brought these people back, pulled them out of combat to go sell war bonds, and basically reenact, you know, how they were reacting to that, just this, this terrible situation. And you know, a lot of them weren't happy to be home. They were like, they would rather be out with their brothers and sisters fighting back in the Pacific. And you know, a lot of character studies on the different guys who were in there, you know, alcoholism and you know, other issues these people were facing. Uh, it's completely well done. You know, it's one of Clint Eastwood's best, I think, and a great little character study on, on, the, on a war. Number 15, The Red Badge of Courage, an older movie based on an older book. Book was written pretty uh, close after the Civil War. Uh, it's one of the most accurate and, you know, disarming books about, you know, the actual uh, brutality of war. And it was kind of a, you know, a stark shock to a lot of people when it first came out. And this movie is, you know, they've made a few movies on this. This is the one that, like, really captures what the, was said in the book and the dialogue and how well this guy, you know, captured the feelings and... You know, the feelings of cowardice when you first face with actual combat, you know, and how some people, you know, try to play it off as they're going hunting, and it's, you know, how people, you know, regroup re themselves from, you know, the horrors of war and come back and, you know, become heroes. And, you know, it's, it's one of the great, I, I more recommend the book than the movie, but the movie is a, it's, it's an older movie, but it really, really hits home exactly what uh, warfare is, and it's one of the greatest examples of it. Read the book, watch the movie. 14, uh, more World War II, uh, more in the Pacific, uh, The Thin Red Line. This was kind of a follow-up, even though by a different director. Uh, God, his name's forgetting. He's off the top of my head, I can't remember. He's another famous director, and he did uh, kind of a follow-up to Saving Private Ryan, only he's in the Pacific with the Marines. You know, it's one of those star-studded, tons of people in the movie, and kind of given little character studies of different guys and what they're doing over there in the Pacific during World War II. Uh, you know, guys who, you know, were kind of shitty people, but were becoming heroes. And just, you know, some great battle scenes too, you know, heroic charges that did happen in that war. And it, it's, you know, I don't want to get too much into it. It's really a movie you have to see, just kind of like grasp the overall of what was going on as they're trying to show all the different pieces of, this, of what's going on in that theater. Uh, absolute recommendation. Number 13, The Longest Day, another World War II movie. They, they, they seem to get the best of them. This is about the lead up to, uh, you know, the Battle of Normandy, and it's told almost in a fake uh, documentary form, looking at, you know, a lot of different sides on both sides of the fence. Tons of great guest stars in this movie, our cameos, tons of, tons of great actors, and it's really another movie trying to give an overall picture you know, like in Saving Private Ryan, we just get the, the, the straight up scene with the army cut storm in the beach. This one like shows just every little aspect of what was going on that day, why it's called the longest day, and really gives you more of an overall picture of how war is, especially at that level. Uh, much older movie, uh, I don't know, if, I think Red Badge of Courage is the oldest one on my list. This might be the second. It's definitely, definitely worth checking out. It, it definitely holds up, especially if you're... Uh, interested in World War II stuff and the invasion of Normandy. This is one of the best ones done on that actual day. Number 12, Heartbreak Ridge. Uh, interesting movie. It's part comedy, part action movie, 
this is a Clint Eastwood movie uh, about to retire gunnery sergeant uh, takes control of a Porsche recon platoon one last time and they are like the typical fuck ups and they probably you know looking at the surface they have no business being in recon and it turns out like they're just there to be uh, beat up on by the actual elite squad but you know it shows him shaping them up you know the whole you know basically the the drill sergeant nasty trope of trying to shape up these guys who he sees potential in to become real marines real recon you know you get so many great lines in this you know the ayatollah of rock and roller you know a, you know a line blatantly stolen by chris jericho of uh, pro wrestling fame and you know then they're actually going into combat and like proving their stripes uh just a fantastic movie all around in terms of acting and uh you know, the, the set, set design, the set pieces, the action scenes, all fantastic. Clint Eastwood, of course, is amazing in this. You know, if you've not seen it, you need to go out and see it. And last for this list, number 11, Top Gun. Uh, some people might have a problem with this, saying, like, one of the best military movies, really. All these other movies you don't do. You put fucking Top Gun on there. Well, I'll tell you why. Uh, in terms of naval, co naval aviation combat, you know, really few movies have touched on this, and since this movie came out, you didn't have any. You know, you had the Iron Eagle, which was even worse, and it was Air Force. This one, like, actually gets a lot of stuff right about, uh, you know, how it happens with Tomcats shooting off aircraft carriers. You know, if, if you, you know, even if you don't like the personal, the personality plots with Tom Cruise, and you know everything that happens with that, and it's kind of Jerry Bruckheimer. Is blah blah blah. At least you know. At least it, it went so far to like actually show how this stuff works, and you know they changed some stuff for film. You know, historically, importantly, it has to be on here just for that, and the fact that you know that just it changed how military movies are done and changed how uh, you know a lot of action movies are done. It's an important piece of cinematic history if it's not like the most greatest you know overall movie that's. You know, just ignore the corn and cheese, and there's, there's still a lot of really good stuff in here. It's another one I've done a military bullshit on. And that's going to do it for part two of uh, Salty Stevens' Top 30 Military Movies. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm having a lot of fun with this. i got my top ten coming up uh, the last part next week. And again, these aren't in any kind of order, so my top, the last ten aren't going to be like my absolute top ten. Like, I think my number one was actually in the 30s in the first group. So don't take it personally and really pay attention to the rankings because there aren't rankings. So hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing this. So I'll see you freaks around and peace.